أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء بنيناها بأيد وإنا لموسعون والأرض فرشناها فنعم الماهدون ومن كل شيء خلقنا زوجين لعلكم تذكرون ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين ولا تجعلوا مع الله إلها آخر إني لكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وإمامنا وسيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household All the messengers who came to us before him and all those who struggled and strove over the generations in a way that today the goodness has come to us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all, to bless every single one of us, and to bless our children, those to come up to the end of time. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful gathering. We ask Allah to accept us all and to open our hearts to that which is correct, to that which is beneficial for us all, and to make us people who can work very, very hard to develop a link and a relationship with the one who made us in a way that the day he takes us away, we have no regrets. I have a topic to discuss and that is the purpose of life. Every one of us knows that we are seated here right now or we are listening to this or perhaps this would be listened to later on. We're alive, that's why we're listening to it. But a day will come when we will no longer be alive. You have to admit, it's not something that dooms us, but it's reality. And the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, always made mention of how important it is to bear it in mind that your life will come to an end. The mere fact that we were born and we become old already shows that there is a purpose to this life. The fact that I was created and I came into this world and then I see others going, it means there is a plan that whoever made me has for me to fulfill during my short life. How short is this life? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, According to some narrations, he says, the average lifespan of the members of my ummah and of this time is between 60 and 70 years. The average age. 
That is, if you don't die in a natural disaster or if you don't die in some form of uh, what would people would say an accident and so on. Generally, people live 60 years, 70 years, they become old. MashaAllah, sometimes they have a bonus. So they live a little bit longer than that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He will ask the question on the day of judgment to some. To those who have not turned to Him, to those who did not develop a link with their Maker. Did we not give you enough life? For those who wanted to take heed, to actually take heed, and did the warner not come to you? Did someone not come to you reminding you that you are going to meet your maker one day? Did someone not come to you reminding you of this day that you have a maker and you're going to meet him? And did a warner in terms of your health deteriorating or your gray hair not come to you to tell you that, hey, there's a purpose that you are in this life for and you better make sure you understand one day you're going to leave it. This is something unique, it's something amazing because like I said moments ago, we all become old and we all have this age and we witness people going. Well, where did they go? They were powerful, they were strong, they were wealthy, they were healthy, they were good looking. They had more children than us, they had so much more in terms of authority than us, but they went away. And today, هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدَ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ do you feel any one of them? Do you feel their presence? No. Do you hear any one of them? No. So where did they go? They were more powerful than I am. More powerful than any one of you. Take a look at the Pharaoh. He used to say, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am your God. That's what he used to say. And yet he's gone. He's out. A few days ago, I received a message showing us part of the galaxy. And it shows you how small the earth is in comparison to the other planets and the new planets that have been discovered recently. And it shows you that the earth is just like a dot. And one of us on this earth is like a miniature dot, small little dot, so insignificant that even if you were to take off on an aircraft a few meters above the earth, you'd stop seeing people. And each one of us thinks I'm a big deal. And yet there's a maker who made the absolute galaxy, everything more than what we would, want, we would know. Who is there? Where is he? And who is he? And why did he make me? In order to answer these questions, he has sent revelation. He sent reminders. And these reminders are not just a joke because to be honest, they have come from generation to generation until we have a large group of people known as those who follow Judaism. They follow Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses. They came with scripture or he came with scripture. They follow it. And then what happened? The Prophet Jesus came thereafter and he came with a fulfillment or a completion or should I say a continuation of what Moses came with. May peace be upon them all. And thereafter, the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, came in and he brought the completion of the message, which means there was no contradiction in those messages but it was a completion they all taught there is one maker one maker one maker made you there are angels there is a last day when you die there will be heaven and hell all of them taught the same thing exactly the same in terms of belief the belief is identical ditto complete they all said do not worship us worship the maker alone you know, when I walk in front of here, I'm so worried. People think sometimes, hey, this man must be a superhuman. No, completely like you, just the same. The only thing is we're reminding one another to go to the maker and to develop a link with him so that when we return to him, we are so, so lucky, so fortunate. So this is what all the prophets did as well. And this is why all of us are heirs of the messenger. All of us are heirs of the messenger, meaning we all have the message of the messenger, peace be upon him. And I need to wake up to reality and so does everyone else. So these messengers came, they brought about a message. They all told us, Allah, ma lakum min 
Worship your maker alone. You have no deity besides him. No one worthy of worship besides your maker. When you render an act of worship, it must not be to a stick or a stone or a human being or any other creature, any other creature. It must be to the one who made you and you develop a link with him and you tell him, Oh, you who made me, I will return to you. The day I return to you, have mercy on me. Do not risk your existence. Risking existence by doing what? You live once. I live once. We all live once here in this world. It is so, so sad if I were to risk that one life by worshipping things and creatures. So Allah says, worship me alone. Be careful. I will send you onto the earth and each one of you will go through problems and issues and difficulties for you to realize that this life is something temporary. Because if this was the life that we had to just do as we pleased in, and if this was the only thing that we were created for, it would have been so much more superb than it is right now. Every one of us, we have health matters, we have problems, we have issues in the home, perhaps we have financial matters, perhaps we have so many other problems and difficulties, a few pieces of stress, sometimes large amounts of stress. And all this is connected to what? To show you that this is all temporary. All this is temporary. Today you're happy, tomorrow you're not. Today you're sad, tomorrow you're happy. This happens. So it does not last forever. You're going through a problem that is there to show you there's a maker. And this whole life is temporary. So at the end of the day, your life will go. And when your life goes, where are you going? It cannot be a bad place if I've been a good person. It cannot. Because those who've gone, They've gone somewhere and where did they go? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly, and this is the verse, the ultimate verse. I've already read it before you and it explains the purpose of life. Allah says, I have not created mankind or jinn kind except so that they worship me. That's the purpose. Someone might say, but I have to earn money. I have to live a life. Allah says, no problem. We will show you how to do it. So do it in a way that you don't cheat people. You don't deceive people. And whilst you are living, do as many good deeds as possible. Reach out to human beings, to animals, to the various, to the ecosystem, the various creatures of the Almighty in a way that you fulfill your responsibility so that by the time you finish your life, you will not have regretted. And when is your life going to finish? Well, Allah says, we kept that for ourselves. We will decide. Can I give you a quick reasoning? One of the reasons. We come into this world absolutely naked without the ability to talk. As you come in, what did you bring with you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And when you die, what do you take with you? Absolutely nothing besides your deeds. Which means everything I have in the middle between birth and death, everything I have in the middle, I'm going to leave it behind unless I converted it into the currency that will help me when I go the other side. What is the currency? It's not the US dollar. It's not the Singapore dollar. I can't have 10 piles and say, okay, I'm going to the grave and I'm just going to bribe my way through or I'm going to pay for my paradise. That's not how it works. You won't be able to take that currency with you. No. You can't say I'm a healthy person. Your body is going to decompose in the soil. You can't say I'm very good looking. Well, that's going to decompose in the soil. But whatever you had between birth and death, if you used it in a correct way, you've achieved, you've got, and you have converted it into a deed. So like we say, if you've got a lot of wealth, say someone inherits $10 million from their father who passed away, and they have this 10 million and they're sitting with it, and they just sit with it until they die. How would it have helped them? It would not have helped them. But if they start spending, whether it is on the spouse, on the children, something which is acceptable, not on that which is prohibited, but if they reach out to the poor and the needy, they reach out to other people and they've spent that money in a good cause. When they die, 
Whether they spent it or not, they won't be able to take it with them. But if they did spend it, they will take the deed with them. This is the purpose of life. To convert what you have in terms of time, in terms of health, in terms of your, your youth, in terms of your wealth, this whole life of yours, convert it into deeds. I'm doing something. When I do it, I take it with me. And when I take it with me, I'm so happy because I know I did not waste my little time in this or on the earth. 70 years is nothing, nothing. It passes like a flash. A lot of us have crossed the halfway mark already. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. So, People might say, I need to earn and I need to have wealth. We all know that because you need to buy clothing. You need to buy a phone, don't you? You need to buy, perhaps you need to pay your rent. You need to earn because you have to look after your children and other things. People want to get married and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry. We know that's part of our plan. You will come in here. You will lead your life. You will earn in a way that we have asked you to. And what is the way we ask you to? In a fair way. Fair. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't deceive. Don't earn at the expense of the loss, at the expense of the profit of the other. Which means you want someone to make a loss so that you make a profit. That would be considered prohibited in Islam, in the law of Allah. This is why usury and interest is wrong. Because it makes the rich richer. And it makes the poor poorer. Interest exploits the poor. So Allah says, never, don't earn that way. You can't do that. Imagine a poor person takes a loan. They've got to pay back more than they've taken. And the rich man just deposited it there. So people whom he doesn't know are actually working for him. And he's without doing anything, he's getting things back. Allah says, no way. You either work for your money or you enter a, into a partnership. And you share the profit and share the loss. Or if you want to borrow someone some money, you lend them some money, for example. You lend them the money and you get back exactly what you gave them. Because each one comes into the world and makes an effort. So this is just some of the plan of Allah. But Allah says immediately after that verse, He says, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقَ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I do not want from my creatures any sustenance. I don't want money from them. I don't want something from them. No. Nor do I want to be fed by them. I am the one who will give them and I am the one who will feed them and whatever they have, they will get it from me. So now take a look at the earth. When you start digging it and you find something that shines, it's valuable. Who put it there? The one who made you and on this earth. Put it there. Why? As a test for you. So now you have the gold, you have silver, you are a wealthy person. What do you do with it? That's what makes you. You know, I want to give you a quick analogy, example. A few weeks ago, I went into a theme park with my children. And the children are very enthusiastic to play games. Very enthusiastic, they're so happy. And what happens? A lot of the theme parks, you pay money, you get a card. And that card, you take it to the game, and you swipe it or you plug it in and it deducts an amount and it gives you a game and the game starts and after a while it finishes it ends some of them are connected to time and some of them are connected to how you play okay let's stop for a moment we all have little phones and little gadgets and there are games on a lot of these gadgets but what we don't understand is there is an example of real life in a lot of these games because the game starts at a point, just like your life starts at a certain point. The aim of a person playing the game is to score as many points as possible. That's the purpose of the game before the game is finished. So what's the purpose of life? Score as many points as possible before your life is over. Score as many points as possible. So what do you do in the game? You follow the rules of the game. They tell you follow this path. Say for example, it's a car game, simple game. You got to, you got to negotiate the bends. Drive as fast as you can without bumping and make sure you beat as many people as you can and make sure that you get to the end, number one. Wow. So now you ask the little children, they'll tell you when I started, I started with a Toyota. Because I came first, I unlocked the next level. 
When I unlocked the next level, they gave me a Lamborghini. When I now have a Lamborghini and I unlocked the next level, they gave me a Pagani Zonda. If you don't know what that is, it's a very, very fast car, believe me. Very fast. The children will know it. I think the adults, you say Pagani Zonda, a few of the guys might know. Okay. So, the child is excited. What happened? I did so well. I tried and tried and tried and I did so well. I unlocked the next stage and the next stage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about paradise. And he says, You really want to compete? Well, compete in getting paradise. You will have levels. There are so many levels. You unlock the next level and the next level and the next level. But your life is short. Make sure you play your game properly. Well, life is not actually a game, but we're just giving you an example. So when I am now a person who's born a child, I know nothing. I'm born into a Jewish home, a Christian home, a Muslim home, a Buddhist home, any home. It is my duty. Or should I say the parents duty to bring you up at least and they will feed you and they will look after you and they will play with you and mashallah when you're crying they will throw you up and down meaning I don't mean throw in a bad way I mean you know make you laugh and so on and then they so happy if you're sick they take you to the doctor so it's a test for them because one of the plans of life is the continuity the reproduction you must have children you must look after them pass the baton on so that people can continue with whatever the Almighty's plan is up to the day he decides decides to finish up the whole of creation and then to say right now is everybody's game is over let's see who did best let's see who did well and let's see who continues into paradise and let's see who deserves anything else so as you grow older you learn how to speak first words every time the first words are uttered from a child people are fascinated it's a miracle so when you start your first word, some people, you know, they have different first words. The mother will call the father. Did you hear what the baby said? You know, and everyone, come, come, come see. And today, you know what they do? They put it on Instagram. First word, Ooh, look at this. Ooh. And they quickly take a picture of it and it's on Facebook. And they take another picture and it's on Twitter. And before you know it, all these accounts are connected. You just put it on one and it's all over. My child is speaking. Before you know it, the child is saying sentences. And the child does cute things as the child grows up. Beautiful. You dress the child, you send the child to school and so on. Then we became of age. My brothers and sisters, when you are born, your parents are in almost total control. Almost. When I say almost, I mean there are certain things they don't control. But they are the ones who decide what your name is going to be. Or your guardians, right? They are the ones who decide what clothes you're going to wear. They are the ones who decide where you are going to be because they need to move you. What you're going to feed on. And Allah's plan is such that as time progresses, one by one, these things are taken away from you. You're a parent. There comes a time when your child does not want to eat what you're giving. Mom, I'm not going to eat this. I don't like it. But when the child was little, you used to feed the child. So one thing went away. What? Food. I need to ask my baby. What would you like to eat? Look at the mothers are so confused. I know in my home, they tell me that more difficult than the cooking is to decide what to cook. I don't know if it's the same with everyone else. That they're going to come to you and say, what are we having today? You say anything. Well, that's the worst answer you could give me. Anything. I hope there was something called anything that we could just cook it. You know? Then I said, well, maybe you need to have a roster and you need to have some food that you call anything. So that when we say anything, it's like fried eggs, maybe. May Allah protect us. So getting back to what I was saying is as you grow older, the next thing is you used to clothe your child. Then the child says, I don't want to wear these clothes anymore. Whoa, it's gone from you. Why? The child is independent. It was the plan of the Almighty to give you parents and to give you children. Why? So that you can look after them. But they actually belong to the maker. So we always tell people who lose children that the one who took the child away loves him or her more than you because he made them in the first place. But he only made you a guardian. And he made this attachment automatic so that you look after him, the child when the child is small and you realize there is a purpose to life. That's why. There is a purpose to life. That's why I have a baby. Because then now I'm old. I'm a mother. I'm a father. And then I become a grandfather and a grandmother. And if I'm lucky, I become a great grandmother and a great grandfather. And then I have to carry on. Where do I go? Somewhere where I hope I prepared whilst I was here. So as the child grows older, learns how to talk. When they learn how to talk, they only utter the words you utter because they don't know the other words. 
Then there comes a time when they start saying new words, words you did not teach them. They learn something else. From where? The environment around them. They learn things and you, you are shocked. They come back home and they do things. But son, I did not teach you this. Welcome to the world. Reality. This is the purpose of life. At that age, the child might not even want to go to the school that you have chosen anymore. Dad, nursery you sent me. Primary you sent me. High school, but I don't want to go to this varsity. Not at all. Not at all. I'd rather not learn. There's so many who tell their parents, I don't want to go where you want to send me. I refuse. Sometimes you drop them off at the door of the college. As you turn back, they're gone. Somewhere else. May Allah not do that to us. Like I always say, I don't think it happens here, does it? So, my brothers and sisters, at that stage, each one of us needs to start asking questions. If you do not ask questions, who am I? Why am I made? Where am I supposed to go? Why do people die? When they die, where do they go? If you do not ask these questions, you are foolish because you live once. You have to ask questions whether you are Muslim. Jewish, Christian, anything else. You must ask questions to yourself. Who am I? Why am I here? Why am I made? Where am I going? Who do I worship? What is worship? Why are people worshiping? What is the story? Why do people pray? What is happening? Why is everyone doing so many things? You have to ask because you don't know how to play the game. You're going to bump into people and your game is going to be over and your money is going to go from your card and your whole card will go and you still won't know how to play the game. I need to know how to do it. So before you play the game, watch someone else. Look at this person, how does he play? Look at that one, how does she play? Look at the other one, oh, this one does very well. Oh, look at that one, such a content person. I wonder, there must be a secret behind it. What is it? Let me research, let me find out. So in the same way, we have a game on one hand. Here we have real life. Like I said, it's not a game. We're only giving you this analogy. Real life. So you start asking questions. And when you ask these questions, you will come up with one straight answer. And that is, I must worship whoever made me. Simple. I have to worship whoever made me. So if I worship a stick, it's out of a question. A stone is a creature. If I worship the sky, the sun, the moon, these are creatures. They are created. I worship like what the prophet Abraham did. He asked exactly the same questions that I am mentioning today. When he saw the stars, he said, maybe this is my Lord. Then when he saw the stars setting, he said, no ways, it can't be. When he saw the moon, he said, maybe this is my Lord. Then he said, no ways. When he saw the sun, he said, Whoa, this must be my Lord. It is big and it is huge. When it set, he said, My Lord cannot be one that sets. My Lord cannot be there and disappear sometimes. He has to be there all the time. Then he says, I turn my face in worship to the one who made me, to the one who made the skies and the earth, all of this in so much of goodness and purity. And I turn to him in cleanliness of worship, which means I worship him alone and I'm not going to associate partners with him, never. That's what Islam calls for. Monotheism, worship your one maker, that's it. Put your head on the ground for the one who made you, the one who made you. So a person asking questions would arrive at that conclusion that he needs to make a link between him and the one whom he's going to go back to. Because when I'm in that grave, on my own, I need someone, I need some company. I wonder where and what will happen. And the only way that I'm going to be saved is by making a relationship between me and he whom I'm going to return to. So that is why you talk to him and say, Oh, you whom I'm going to return to have mercy on me the day I return to you. Did you take a risk? No, I didn't because I addressed him as, Oh, you whom I'm going to return to. And I said, oh my maker, have mercy on me. I worship you and you alone. 
thank you for making me and giving me this chance to be in the world. I'm going to put my head on the ground for you and you alone. So when we put our head on the ground, what do we say? We say, all praise be to you. Glory be to you who made me. You who is in control of my life. You whom I'm going to return to. Rabbun. You whom I, who, who has absolute control of every aspect of my existence. You are so high. Glory be to you. That's what we say when we put our head on the ground. We don't say, oh ground, I'm worshipping you. Oh tree, I'm worshipping you. Oh man, oh saint. You know, I want to give you one example I need to get off my chest. Off my chest. I've been traveling to this part of the world for a while. And we all have different cultures. We have different, uh, you know, upbringings, for example. But we have a similar purpose in life. The same, in fact. But the culture, sometimes when you're not used to it, then you become a person who feels a little bit embarrassed towards certain things. And we were always taught you do not bow to anyone besides your maker. Whoever made you, you bow to him. So when I arrived here, and even up to now, you shake people's hands. And out of their love for you, perhaps their respect for you, they end up... Have you seen that? They end up like bowing, kissing your hand. And I'm like, oh, that's for Allah, not for me, man. Come on, you can't bow to me. And the guy says, hey, relax. This is just a culture here, man. Just relax. And I say, but where? And I'm not used. That's why I always tell people, brother, my hand is not worth kissing. Not this one. No. You can take my message, but stop worshipping me. They say, no, we're not worshipping. I say, hang on. I prefer to shake a hand like this. Subhanallah. But then they say, you're arrogant. No, we're not arrogant. Not at all. Please. Believe me, I'm not. Inshallah, I hope not. But it's just something we're not used to. So why I say this is because it depends where you brought up. And sometimes you look at things and you know, hey, this is strange to me because I don't want people thinking I'm someone who is really, you know, above there. That's when they'll come to me and say, Sheikh, forgive me for the, the adultery I committed. How can you say that to me? No one's done that, by the way. But I'm saying, I get scared to say, I hope they don't think you're some, you know, superior being that needs to be treated very differently from everybody else. You can respect. That would mean you don't swear, you don't cheat, meaning you don't utter bad words and so on. You can perhaps look, you know, good words. You might get a moment, you might not get a moment. If it was so important in life to greet someone by shaking hands, Allah would have given us the opportunity to shake the whole world's hands. Believe me. But sometimes you just need to know the message and follow it, even if you've never known the person, for example, in person. But if the message is right and it is leading you towards your maker, not towards the individual, then you need to know this message is correct. If I am promoting myself, I am the worst from amongst you. But if I'm promoting my maker, that's what everybody's here to listen to. Subhanallah. I'm saying, look guys, whoever your maker is, make your link with him. So now what do we call this maker of ours? It's interesting. Well, he says, call me Allah. That means the worshipped one. The one who is worthy of worship. This is why we say, La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides the one who made me. Mean the worshipped one. The one who made me. Who, who made you? Say, whoever made me. I call him the worshipped one. He is one alone, singular. He has the power and the kingdom belongs to him in totality. And for him, I surrender. I bow. I prostrate. I ensure that whatever I do from the point that I achieve understanding right to the last minute will be within his pleasure. I will bow down for him five times a day. When I pray, I pray only to him. I was saying moments ago, so we do not worship a stick, a stone, a saint, a man, a tree, or any animal or any creature. No, you worship the Lord of all those creatures of that he has made. The Lord. This is what the Prophet Abraham says. So let's get back to our game. Okay. Now you have instruction manual. How can you have a game with no instruction? How can you have anything that someone has made? They don't give you an instruction. I give you a beautiful gadget. And I tell you, my sister, this is the latest technology for you. Gift. You look at it and you say, what is it? What is it? That would be foolish. Because nowadays you have things that you don't know what exactly they are. It's just technology. And then people say, you know, this is something so sophisticated. Let me explain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why? Because it's sophisticated, you needed an explanation. 
So here's the instruction manual. Today they say it is user friendly. You know what user friendly means? It means as you get along, you'll be able to figure out how to work it. That's what it means. To be honest, you will be able to figure out as you grow up that there is a maker. We are also very user friendly, subhanallah, very. You know that, hey, if my purpose is only to live this life and to earn money, I start worshipping money. So I want to earn money by hook or crook. And if that's the case, when I die, I'll be known firstly as a bad person. All people might know me as a very, very cunning, shrewd businessman who really earns so much. But where did I go? What happened? My money didn't come with me. So there has to be a bigger picture. Look at how user friendly we are. Automatically, you just watch the others and you understand that there's a purpose. But you need to think for that. You need to apply your mind. And you will understand there has to be a word of God. So which is the word of God? There are so many books on earth. There has to be a book that is the word of the Almighty. So let's look at which book it could be. Simple question I ask you. Which is the most authentic book on earth today? And when we say authentic, the one that's memorized by the largest number of people. The next book is no comparison to that. Not memorized even by a fraction of a fraction of those who've memorized this one book. That's the Quran. A book that unchanged the whole world agrees. Muslimin across the globe, more than two billion people. The only book that everyone knows is unchanged. Unchanged completely. The followers of the faith, everyone knows this book, this is what it is. If I were to read a verse of the Quran and I were to make a mistake right now, I'm sure we would have at least 200 people in this hall who would be able to tell me you're wrong. And sometimes even more. If I make a mistake in Surah Al-Fatiha, you know the opening Surah of the Quran. If you know it off by heart, put your hand high up. Let's see. Surah Al-Fatiha, the first Surah of the Quran. If you know it off by heart, Put your hand right up. Let's see. Show of hands. Amazing. MashaAllah. Almost everyone knows it off by heart. That means there's something about it. And if you know more than just Surah Al-Fatiha, put up your hand. Let's see. Anything more than just Surah Al-Fatiha, put up your hand. Look, the same number of hands. That means we have made an effort to learn this book. And we have adjusted ourselves so that we understand it. This is why people say, why do you have to pray in Arabic? And I tell people, no, prayer, if it is supplication, you can have it in any language. But if it is a certain set of words and actions known as salah, then the reasons why it has to be in Arabic, the Almighty knows. But some we might be able to expand on. One of them is for us to preserve this authenticity of the book. Everyone should know so that if anyone makes a mistake, the whole world can correct them. Hey, you're wrong. You're wrong. So now I need this manual. I will read the manual. I told you today, choose a book that you think is the word of God. Choose it. You will come up with a conclusion that is the Quran. Anyone and everyone on the globe will come up with a conclusion it's the Quran because unchanged. Believe me, maximum number of people have memorized it. It is completely authentic. Read the wordings. It is actually the word of God. If you take a look at other scriptures, you will find discrepancies, meaning lots of change. The people, the followers of the, the same faith would be arguing and debating over whether this verse is there or not and how and exactly what it, the verse is. The Quran, there's no debate of that nature. Nothing. Nothing. So there is no question. And this is why we say that the Almighty is so, so merciful to us. He gave us things and He says, you know what? Technology is at your fingertips. You can find out. And keep on asking. Keep on asking until you're satisfied. Even if you're a Muslim, keep on asking until you're satisfied. Do not be shy of questions. No, don't. Keep on asking until you're happy. Because you need to know you live once. You must do what you believe is firmly correct. Guided by scripture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. And when you are living at a certain age, then you, you get to know your maker. 
And this is why, you know, I met a person who was atheistic, completely atheistic, meaning he was proud of saying, I believe that there's nothing. It's just us. You know, it's just the life. We are alive and we'll die. And then we carry whatever happens, happens. But there's nothing, there's no deities. It's all this coincidence. You know, everything has happened, just nature. We're just part of a plan. What plan? Of nature. Whoa, okay. When he, he's met me once, and he told me, I'm worried. Now, this is an old person. He's not just young. He says, you know, I'm worried. I said, worried about what? He says, I'm old. I said, you are worried because deep down you believe that there is something coming after death. That's why you're worried. Because now you're thinking, I can't just die. Come on, I'm so important here. I've got family. I've got people. I've got... You think I'm just going to die and disappear into thin air? Is that the case? That's why you're saying I'm worried. Because you now are thinking in yourself that... Perhaps there is something because your heart is telling you, yes, there is something. If you were convinced, why would you be worried? Deathbed, you say, guys, goodbye, bye guys, see you on the other side. Well, how do you know you're going to see them on the other side? It means there's another life, isn't it? The eternal life. Amazing. This is what Allah says. You know what Allah says? Amazing. Surah Al-Baqarah. We will test all of you. We will test all of you. With what? We want you to unlock level one after the other. So we're going to test you with hunger. We will test you with fear. We will test you with loss of life around you. So you will lose your loved ones. How do you react? Do you realize that the one who took them away loves them more than you? And he actually made them in the first place. We will test you with loss of produce, meaning even in business you will suffer loss. We test you with these things. These are some of the tests. There are so many other tests. Why tests? Because life is an examination. That's why. We are in this big school where every little while we get a test. And don't come and tell me no, because every one of us are tested. The fact that you've got to go to work and come back is a test. The fact that to survive you need to do things is a test. When someone steals from you, it's a test. How do you react? Someone swears you, it's a test. Everything. You have a problem. Your knee is sore. You've hurt yourself. It's a test. Do you become upset and angry? Or do you do something about it with a beautiful smile and say, you know what, I'm going to pass this test. You suffer a loss. Not every day will be of, of profit. Not every day is a profitable day. There will be days when you suffer a loss. Why? Because the Almighty is reminding you. And he is saying, listen, the purpose of this life is not for it to be eternal, definitely. It's for you to prepare for the next one. That's what it is. When you go to school, is your purpose of existence going to school? No. It is to graduate from the school one day with a certificate that will take you into the real world so that you get a job. Same applies, we are in this big school. We are going to work for so many years in a way that when we graduate from here, we have a certificate that takes us to the eternal life where we can get a place. May Allah grant us that place. So if we just think that life is all about enjoying without a limit, we are actually mistaken. There is a purpose to life and that is you will enjoy but within the limits. Within limits. What are the limits? They've been explained to you. Here's the manual. If you do this, this is the result. If you do that, this will be the result. If you are careful, you will have ease. If you listen to people's advice, perhaps you will be able to lead an easier life. If you want to just do as you please, well, there will, become, there will come a day when you are depressed. And you know, people talk to us and today I always say, right now if you read statistics on the globe, you'll be shocked as to what percentage of those in developed countries are depressed. You'll be shocked, shocked. Those who are depressed or who've been through a lot of depression, and yet they're in developed countries, everything is there. Because sometimes they're living such a fake life that they've been cheated into believing that the car is yours when it's not. You're paying every month. The house is yours. It's not. You might die. You're so worried. You lose a job and everything's taken away from you. You're on the street. No one's worried about you. Why? You didn't understand. Allah says, adjust your life according to what you have. Adjust your life. You cannot afford something, don't worry. Live in rented accommodation. You cannot afford something, don't worry. Catch the public transport instead of jumping into a car. If you can't afford it, don't worry. There is an alternative. Buy a bicycle, ride. You might live longer. 
Allah grant us ease. So there is a purpose to life, something great and grand. Now when the child tells you, Dad, I won, I'm the top at the game. What happens? There comes a time you say, okay, next level. He plays the next level and the next level. Then there has to come a time when the game is over. And what happens? You're either first, second or third, whatever it is, or somewhere down the line, or you didn't even do well. You bumped the car. I was giving you the example of the car game. Sorry, the sisters for that example. Cars. But I think sisters like cars as well, mashallah. Especially the little ones. So what happens? The game comes to an end. When it comes to an end, you would have been foolish if you didn't do your best. You wasted your money, you wasted your time, or maybe your parents' money. And sometimes you can go back. Oh, this is a powerful point. You can go back, play again. Go back, play again. Go back and play again. Because you bumped your car. Play again. In real life, game is over once. But during the game, you can just say, okay, let me start again. And you start again. How? Ask Allah's forgiveness. Repent. Repent to who? Well, your purpose of life will explain. You don't repent to a person or a thing or a tree or an animal or a saint. No. You repent to your maker. Oh, you who made me. I regret what I did. I did something bad. I cheated someone. I really regret. I admit my sin. I ask you for forgiveness. And I'm going to go to that person because he or she is involved. And I'm going to say sorry to them as well. And you go there with humbleness, humility. Brother, I robbed you of so much. I'm giving it back to you. Please forgive me. I really beg you to I'm sorry. The only reason why you would go to someone is if you've wronged them. But if it's your own sin, a person committed adultery, they drank alcohol, perhaps they're into the, the, you know, the fast wrong life. In that particular case, you ask the Almighty alone, Oh Allah, I've missed my prayers. I haven't even prayed. I haven't even dressed appropriately. Forgive me. I regret it. I really want to be strong. Make me strong. From this day on, I'm going to be a much better person so that I can score so much. When I meet you, I will be a winner. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, there will come a time when if you follow, and remember Judaism and Christianity also have a similar dress code for women. It's just that they stop following it. Or it's just that they've changed it over time. You go to the Orthodox, they will tell you that this is right. So the Quran tells us that if you follow this, there will be people who will perhaps laugh at you. That's part of your test. Imagine I'm driving from here, from here to Johor, okay? There's a road, okay? And as I'm going through, some people are laughing at me and joking. Does it mean I must just turn around and say, maybe Johor is the other way? Foolish, I know where I'm going. This is the road. This is the path. And I'm carrying on, people can laugh at me. When I get there, I'll laugh at them. Tell them I made it. It's part of your test. It's like, you know, when you're having, there is a race between us and the devil. When you're having a race, there will be people who come to you and try and, you know, distract you. Hey, hang on, come here. Why don't you have a drink? Sit down. And then the people who are supposed to beat you have beaten you. Then they say, ha, 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 they beat you. Carry on. They look at you and laugh. That's what the devil wants to do with us. But if you're a person who understands, you won't be distracted. You know, this is the path. They can laugh and do what they want. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَضْحَكُونَ The bad people, the criminals, they always used to laugh at the believers. They laugh at them, scoff at them. Ah, you know what, you're so young, why are you dressed this way? Well, there's a plan. We are not just supposed to reveal everything for the whole world to say, hey, and you know, the things that happen as a result, that's not my topic now. But if you disobey an instruction, there is a reason why your maker is given an instruction. When you don't want to obey, there will be a repercussion. There is a payment that is made as a result. And you may understand it, you may not. Go and study it and see what happens. There are people who've become queer and weird. When I say weird, I'm, I'm not talking of a specific thing. I'm talking of so many different things that come to my mind where people are doing strange things because it's a repercussion of something we've left out. That's what it is. Something we've changed drastically. And this is why people tell you, you know, the world is so modern, yet it is so barbaric. And it is so backward in the sense we're not even tolerating each other. Come on, what's going on? So. The Almighty's kept for us a plan. Like I was saying, 
We're supposed to dress in a specific way. We're supposed to do things in a specific way. If we do so, perhaps people will laugh at us. But the Quran says, at the end, you know who will be given the chance to laugh? <laughs> a chance to laugh at those who used to laugh at them and they will be sitting reclining back and saying you know what you are the guys who used to laugh at us may Allah grant us ease purpose of life there is a bigger purpose to this little life of ours it's not just to go out and earn money not that's not the only thing you go out and earn money yes but it's not the only purpose if I don't have money then it does not mean that I will not get paradise I can and I want to tell you if life was all about earning money, then earning money would make me happy. But ask those who have a lot of money, that's sometimes the only thing they have. They've got nothing else. They don't have good health. They cannot sleep without sleeping pills. They don't have happiness and peace in their homes. They are scattered apart. They're fighting and killing each other. Sometimes that happens. Not everyone, but I'm giving you an example. So this is something that we need to think about. And inshallah, we will spend the rest of today learning more about the purpose of life and so on. I hope and I pray that by the time we get to the end of our lives, we've actually spent it in such a fruitful, meaningful way. And we've unlocked one stage and the next and the next and the next in a way that when the game is over, we've actually scored the best we ever could. We've played as best as we can. And like I say, worship your maker alone. Understand the message of the messengers and reach out to one another. Be kind, be good with one another. Make sure that you've reached out as best as you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The Prophet Muhammad was asked, which are the characteristics of those who would enter paradise? He said, those who have piety in them, those who are conscious of their maker, number one, and those who have good character and conduct. So develop your character. Don't be an arrogant person because you only live once. Touch the lives of people in a beautiful way. And by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will all be able to achieve goodness in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters, I pray for you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the straight path and keep us on the straight path. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.